Repudiate Valueless Things From the Watchtower of April 15th, 2008 This study contains a clear example of how Jehovah's Witnesses are trained to turn their minds off by accepting fallacy and propaganda. Let's take paragraphs 17 and 18, sentence by sentence, to see how the Watchtower bends the rules of logic to blind its readers. Another example of valueless words is found among the religious leaders of Christendom. These claim to speak in God's name, but most of their utterances are not based on the Scriptures, and what they say is basically worthless. Here the Watchtower generalizes about every Christian church, except Jehovah's Witnesses. The reasons are, most of their utterances are not based in the Bible, and what they say is basically worthless. Terms like most and basically are called weasel words. The Watchtower cannot make a straightforward statement because this is an opinion, not fact. Is Christendom 51% wrong about the Bible? 75 or even 90%? No one can say. Watch out for weasel words. Next sentence. Apostates too speak valueless words, claiming to have greater wisdom than the faithful and discreet slave. Name that fallacy. That's right. It's a straw man argument. Those who disagree with the Watchtower do not claim to have greater wisdom. They just disagree. This has nothing to do with a wisdom contest. Besides, does the leadership of Jehovah's Witnesses actually have greater wisdom than anyone else? Nobody should think that being an anointed Christian gives him wisdom superior to that of the great crowd with the earthly hope. Next sentence. However, apostates speak their own wisdom, and their words are valueless, a stumbling block to any who might listen. Notice how the Watchtower uses the label apostates. This is loaded language, and the Watchtower defines it here. Name-calling slaps a negative, easy-to-remember label onto a person, a group, or an idea. Examine whether there is bias. If the message is rife with name-calling and loaded words, why is that? Because if the Watchtower can get you to label someone, then you don't have to think about what they're actually saying. Let's break this sentence down. Apostates speak their own wisdom, and their words are valueless. Quite a generalization, without any reference or example. This is outright propaganda. Generalization. Another very successful tactic of propaganda is generalization. Generalizations tend to obscure important facts about the real issues in question, and they are frequently used to demean entire groups of people. If the Watchtower can prejudice you against a whole group, then they don't have to worry about the facts in question, and neither will you. Mind off. Next paragraph. In harmony with John's counsel, we always encourage those we meet in the preaching work to test what they have been taught by comparing it with the Bible. That is a good rule for us, too. Amen to that, brother. If any statements come to our ears that are critical of the truth or cast aspersions on the congregation, the elders, or any of our brothers, we do not accept them at face value. How can you be critical of the truth? No one can argue with that. The Watchtower's actually inserted another fallacy, the red herring. The original issue is very clear in the cited scripture. See, the idea is not whether things are critical of the truth but whether it is true at all. But there's a deeper meaning to this term, the truth. The truth is the most powerful example of loaded language among Jehovah's Witnesses. The truth refers to the beliefs of Jehovah's Witnesses at this time. For that reason, it is called progressive truth or present truth because it changes or even reverses its meaning. For most people, that is an opinion, not truth. Since the Bible has not changed, the truth changes based on the governing body's opinion. And if the truth can change at any time, it isn't always true. For example, the truth book, published in 1968, is no longer used because the truth has changed. So what are Jehovah's Witnesses to do when they hear something critical of the truth? We ask, is the one spreading this story acting in harmony with what the Bible says? Stop. Another fallacy. Guilt by association. The Watchtower prejudices its readers against anyone who is not a witness, regardless of how valid the information. And if a faithful witness speaks out against the truth, well, that wouldn't be faithful now, would it? Some individuals who were once part of the Christian congregation now attempt to mislead the sheep by speaking twisted things, half-truths, and outright lies. Indeed, no matter what apostates may say to the contrary, the real aim of intruders is to steal and slay 
and destroy. By the way, that was another fallacy. The appeal to fear. The paragraph concludes, Anything we hear that tears down the brotherhood rather than builds it up is a worthless thing. Another blanket condemnation of anything that threatens the authority, not of God or the Bible, but the governing body. The small group of men who control the beliefs of Jehovah's Witnesses. Any dissent is worthless. The only way to maintain this control is to control their minds. Avoid independent thinking. How is such independent thinking manifested? A common way is by questioning the counsel that is provided by God's visible organization. How Jehovah's Witnesses once described Irish Catholics is now the truth about themselves. The clergy have dominated their lives, told them what they can read, what they should believe and do. To ask a sound religious question is a demonstration of a lack of faith in God and the church according to the clergy. As a result, the Irish people do very little independent thinking. They are victims of the clergy and fear. But freedom is in sight. Watchtower Comments is produced by an active member of Jehovah's Witnesses. This video is not authorized or endorsed by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Thank <laughs> you.